Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of At Home with Dan. Today I'm going to be making a basic wholemeal bread. If you follow me on my YouTube channel you may have already seen that I've already done a basic white bread. The basic wholemeal bread is a very very similar process, it's just slightly different ingredients. So I just wanted to run through this one so everybody has a, another alternative to do. Uh, so ingredients I'm using today is wholemeal flour. I'm still using some strong white bread flour. A lot of people when they make wholemeal bread or brown bread, they use all wholemeal flour and then the consistency is really off. With wholemeal flour, because of the content of rusk that it still has in it, because it's got the grain and everything left in, it makes it very heavy and it can make your dough very tight. So what I usually do is kind of counteract that with a little bit of the strong white flour. So you're still getting a lovely wholemeal loaf. It's just, it just comes up nice and aerated and it's, it's not as dense and heavy as, as just using all wholemeal would be. It's about a kind of 60%, 40% split between 60 wholemeal and 40 uh, white. Um, so ingredients wise, I've got my flour in the bowl already. So it's got the wholemeal and the, and the uh, strong red flour in there. I've got a pinch of salt in there also. I've got soft brown sugar. So instead of caster sugar, I'm using brown sugar in this one. So I'm gonna put that in with the flour. And then other ingredients I have is an egg and some olive oil. These are two ingredients in the recipe that you could do the recipe without. These are essentially just to kind of enrich the, enrich the dough, um, but you can do without. I have some yeast, so I'm using fresh yeast. In the bottom of here, I've also got some black treacle. Now the black treacle, it, it gives it a really kind of lovely, kind of like scrumptious kind of toasty flavor. Uh, again, you don't have to put it in. You could just use all uh, brown sugar instead of the treacle, but the treacle just seems, it just gives it something else really. And then I've got my warm water, so it's body temperature water. Um, I'm just gonna add that to the yeast and the black treacle. That's just gonna activate the yeast for us. So I'm just gonna give that a good mix up. The reason I've put the black treacle in with the yeast and the water is because the black trickle will kind of stick to everything else. So if you put it in with the yeast and water, the water kind of dissolves the black trickle into it and you get all the lovely flavor. It just doesn't make too much of a mess. And I don't know if you can see there, but that's gone like a really lovely dark brown color. You could even, if you wanted to this recipe, take a little bit of the water out and replace it with like a stout, like a dark ale, dark beer. Um, and just gently warm it up a little bit. Uh, so you make yourself a nice kind of stout bread, which would be lovely. I'm just gonna pop this flour to one side. So then I'm, you can do this by hand. Personally, I have a KitchenAid or a, a, a planetary mixer, which just does the work for you, really. Um, so I'm gonna use my mixer. So as I say in here, I've got the flour, I've got the sugar and the salt. So essentially dry ingredients in one bowl. I'm gonna put that on the mixer. Using the dough hook attachment, I hope you can see the dough hook there. And I'm just going to give this a slow mix round just to incorporate those three ingredients in there before I add the wet ingredients. Right, so I've just given the dry ingredients a quick mix on the machine so they're all incorporated together now. I've got my yeast with my water mix and my black treacle in here and I'm just going to whisk in my egg and my oil. So we'll give them a good whisk together. Make sure they're well incorporated. And then once these are all nicely mixed, what we're gonna do is add our wet ingredients to our dry ingredients in the mixer. It'll come together as a dough. And then once it's come together as a dough in the mixer, we're just gonna put the mixer on about speed four. Um, and we're just gonna let it knead, basically. It's gonna do all the work for us. If you're doing this by hand, you wanna knead it for about 10 minutes or so. Uh, you'll get some big guns if you do it by hand. So I'm just going to take this to the mixer. I'm just going to add this to the mix now. So that's all the wet ingredients added into the dry mix there. It's now formed a dough on the inside. And you can tell when it's a really good dough when it actually comes away from the sides and it almost cleans the inside of the bowl. Um, so now that's doing that, I'm just going to let that mix on speed number four for five minutes. Uh, once that's done, we'll come back to it and we'll go into the next thing. Right everybody, so my dough's been kneading for five minutes on the mixer now. Uh, I just want to take it out the bowl and give you, give you a look at what it should look like. So I'm just going to put a little touch of flour onto my work surface just so it doesn't stick. And it should hopefully just come out the bowl quite nicely in one 
big dollop like that. And as you can see, the ball on the inside is relatively clean. There's a few little bits on the sides, but apart from that, it's come out nice and clean. And then what we should be able to do is just knead it and stretch it out, push it down with your palm, pull it back to yourself. And you can see we've got a nice smooth dough. And the more you knead it, the smaller the air bubbles become inside of it. So that guys, once you've got to that stage, hopefully it looks like this. And you're left with a lovely wholemeal bread dough. And it smells amazing already. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna line my bowl with a touch of flour, touch of flour on the bread also. And I'm just gonna pop that into the bowl. And then from here, I'm just gonna cover this in cling film. I'm gonna put it to one side in my kitchen so it's quite warm in the kitchen. Um, ideally, proven temperature is kind of quite warm and humid, so somewhere like an air and cupboard is fantastic. But if you're in the kitchen cooking anyway, generally the kitchen's quite a good temperature. I'm gonna cover it in cling film, leave it to one side, and I'm gonna leave it for about 40 minutes. But what we're looking for is the, the dough to pretty much double in size. So I'm hoping when we come back to this in about 45 minutes time, that the dough is almost touching the cling film on the top. And then we know that the yeast's working, it's activated, it's, it's, it's proved and it's increased in size. So I'll see you in about 45 minutes and we'll see where we're at with our, with our dough then. Right everybody, I've come back to my bread dough 45 minutes later and as you can probably see, it's pretty much touching the cling film. It's doubled in size, proved up really nicely. So I'm just gonna take the cling film off. And then just using a touch of flour, I'm just gonna flour my work surface. I'm also just gonna put a bit of flour into the bowl, it just helps it come out. So we're just gonna take all this out. Right, so that's all of the dough on the bench. What we're gonna do now is just gonna knead it again. And this is what's called the knocking back stage. So we're basically knocking it back down to the size that it was. So we're just gonna do this for a minute or two. Just knock all the air out. And it will go back down to its original size before it was proofed. Right guys, so once you've kneaded it for a few minutes and you've knocked it back, I'm just gonna bring it back to the kind of the ball shape. So on the bench, just roll it into that ball. Now this recipe should give us a, a mix of about 1.5 kilos. So I'm just gonna take some scales and I've got a knife. And what I'm gonna do with this mix is I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna basically split it into three and I'm gonna make two loaves and the rest I'm gonna do into bread rolls. What I'm gonna do with the rest of the dough is I'm gonna cut it into 80 gram pieces and I'm gonna make bread rolls with those. So now I've got the dough cut up into the sizes I want, um, I'm just gonna knead them into the shapes. So for the bread, I'm just using these small bread tins. And what I'm gonna do is just knead it again, so the same kind of kneading process of pushing it out with your palm and pulling it back with your fingers. And then again, I'm gonna take that to a, a nice big, neat ball and then just gently roll it out and then I'm going to pop that into the tin. So as you can see it doesn't quite fit the tin at the moment but we need to prove this again and on the second prove it will actually prove into the size of the tin. If you made it too big before you proved it you're going to end up with bread coming out and spilling over kind of like a volcanic mess. And then for the rolls I'm just going to put them onto a tray. So I'm just going to take it and basically all you need to do is using the palm of your hand, kind of cup your hand a little bit and we're going to push it with this part of our hand and push it down into the bench as well as pushing forward at the same time. Kind of as if you were like say waxing a car or something and you're doing that kind of movement. And you just push and you just use your fingers just to keep it inside of your palm. 
and then you get a nice little bread roll. If you feel like you need a little bit of flour on the surface, by all means go for it. So again, just push. Use your fingers and your thumb just to keep it in the right place and it's just your palm that's doing the molding. So we go, you know, once you get good at it, you can start doing two. Go twice as fast. And then basically just repeat until you've got all your bread rolls molded. Right, so we've got our bread molded. The next thing to do is just garnish it up ever so slightly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my knife and I'm just gonna score down the center of the bread loaves and then just off center on an angle on the rolls. And then I'm just gonna take some of my wholemeal flour and then dust some of this over the top. And it just gives it a really nice kind of farmhouse handmade look and feel to it. Just like that. And then after that, what we need to do is let it, let it have its second proof. So to do this, a little tip that I have is to actually use some uh, bin liners or bin bags. Obviously, clean bin bags, don't use dirty ones. Um, so inside of clean bin bag, what we're gonna do is just take our, take our bread, just gonna pop it in, and then in kind of like one swift motion, you need to kind of pull back on the bag and push down. And what it does is it traps the air that's inside of the bag. So we do, do that, tuck it in, and you can see it kind of creates a little, a little atmosphere for it. So basically ideal conditions are quite warm and humid, and this is going to create its own, its own humidity inside of the bag. If you didn't have any bags like this to put it in, you could just like cover in cling film, but don't wrap it in cling film, just lightly cover it. If you wrap it, you find it'll be too tight and it won't give the bread room, like room to proof. Um, and you run the risk of it sticking to the cling film and when you pull the cling film away, it then all comes away and you just kind of ruined your bread. Right guys, so that's our bread dough in for the second proof. All we need to do now is wait another 45 minutes. Um, once it's ready, we'll come back and we'll stick it in the oven. On the oven, I've preheated it to 200 degrees. Um, so as I say, come back 45 minutes time, we'll get those in the oven and then we'll cook them up. So we're back 45 minutes later just to check on the second proof of the bread, see how it's getting on. So just carefully remove it from its uh, proving chamber. And we should hopefully see that they've increased in size. And at this stage, you just want to be careful not to catch the dough or not to knock it, because you don't want to knock any of that air out. So as you can see, it's it's opened up nicely where I put the slit in. It's got the, uh, the, the flour on there as a garnish. So that's our bread dough ready to go in the oven. Cooking times are gonna vary slightly here. So my bread rolls are probably just gonna take about 10 to 12 minutes. Whereas the loaves are probably gonna take closer to like 15 to 20. Um, so a little trick I'm gonna give you here. This is something that I learned many, many years ago. Is I've got my oven on to 200 degrees. So it's quite a hot oven. But at the same time as being a hot oven, bread quite likes a little bit of like atmosphere, a little bit of steam in there. So what I'm gonna do is once I get the bread in the oven, I've got a little pot of water here. I'm just gonna throw the water on a tray on the bottom of the oven and it's gonna create some steam. So it's kinda of gonna flash steam everything and it's just gonna give our bread one last little push of proving just before that heat really gets to it and starts creating a crisp. This bread's fantastic to freeze down. It can last for up to a couple of months in the freezer out of the oven in the kitchen or wherever you're keeping it. Freshly made bread doesn't last very long. It goes stale quite quickly. It doesn't have any additives in it, doesn't have any A numbers. So fresh bread, best on the day you make it, not too bad the day after. Probably is another day and you're looking at toasting it because it's gone a bit too stale. Um, so ideally, if you make a batch like this, freeze some of it down, 
um, and you can just take it out and warm it up as and when you want it, toast it as and when you want it. Um, but f fresh is best to be honest. So I'm just going to get this in the oven. As I say, with the water, I'm just going to tip that on the bottom. Now the bread's in the oven, we'll come back 12 to 15 minutes to check the bread rolls. Uh, hopefully they'll be nice and golden brown and crispy around the outside. Once they're done, we're just going to take them out and let them cool down. Right then everybody, so as you can see, I've already got my uh, bread rolls out of the oven. They've been out for about five minutes now, just onto a cooling rack here. I'm just about to take the loaves out, uh, so they've had another five minutes, or about 20 minutes now for the bread loaves. So just to kind of show you what you're looking for, obviously you want a really nice, crisp uh, outer shell. Hopefully these just turn out quite simply. And then the old school way of checking to see if it's cooked just holding it up and holding it to your ear and just patting the bottom and you just want to hear like a hollow sound. So I don't know if you can hear that. So that sounds perfect to me. Right everybody, thank you very much for watching today's episode of At Home With Dan. Uh, wholemeal bread. The recipe will be available on my website. Uh, I hope you all have a go. Uh, let me know what you think and how you get on and any pictures that you take, put them onto my social media. I'd love to see how you get on. Thank you very much for watching guys, take care, stay safe.